The Fed's balance sheet unwind. Will it be taper tantrum 2.0 or much ado about nothing? Well, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that the unemployment rate in the U.S. is now at a 15-year low at 4.4%, and that's given Janet Yellen the green light to take her foot off the gas and curtail the Fed's balance sheet. That also has the bond bears worried that as the Fed stops buying, yields will go up. Well, we, the economics team at Payton, we don't worry. We know that the Fed's balance sheet actually tells us very little about what will happen to longer-term interest rates in the year ahead. So why do people worry so much? Well, three reasons. First, it is a big balance sheet. The Fed's balance sheet is now $4.5 trillion, and people think, well, surely that must have some impact on the market when it begins to shrink. Second, famous bond managers worry. They go on television. They talk about the balance sheet. That gets into newspaper articles, and that gets into the public consciousness. And third, we do have one very dramatic episode where interest rates rose due to the sayings and speak and chatter of monetary policymakers. That was the taper tantrum. So we're going to look at each of these three in turn. First, the big balance sheet. Keep in mind, while the Fed talks a lot about monetary policy and overnight rates, what they really do on a day-to-day -day basis is back the nation's currency. So all of the cash and coin in your pocket that goes on the liability side of the Fed's balance sheet, and it's backed by assets uh, on the asset side, including U.S. Treasury bonds. So that's what makes up the balance sheet. So here's a picture of the Fed's balance sheet, the asset holdings over time, and a couple of things to notice. First, there's a natural rate of growth of about 5 to 7%, which corresponds with the growth of the U.S. and global economy and the demand for cash. And there's a very unnatural point on this chart, which is the post-crisis era, when the Fed expanded the balance sheet even more rapidly as a way to stimulate the economy by adding treasury bonds and agency mortgage-backed securities. Now, the natural rate of growth will continue off into the future. And from what we know, from what the Fed told us, there will be a very slow, gradual shrinkage of the balance sheet. And right now, we think it's going to be about $10 billion per month rolling off and back into the coffers of the U.S. Treasury. But don't worry. The Fed's balance sheet will be a big balance sheet well into next decade at the point where the current size of the balance sheet shrinks and intersects with the natural rate of growth in the balance sheet. We think it'll still be a $3 trillion plus balance sheet well into next decade. Second, what about those bond managers that go on TV and worry about the balance sheet? Well, this has happened a number of times over the years, most notably before the end of QE2, bond managers were on TV saying, who will buy treasuries when the Fed steps away? Well, lo and behold, someone was buying treasuries because treasury bond yields were actually lower after the end of QE2. And we looked at a couple of other episodes in history where the Fed's been changing its balance sheet, and the results are, well, inconclusive. Sometimes bond yields are up, sometimes bond yields are down, sometimes bond yields are unchanged in the 12 months after a change to the Fed's balance sheet. So if you're out there saying, if the Fed ain't buying, yields will be arising, you will probably be wrong. We do, though, have one episode of very dramatic moves in longer-term interest rates due to, to central banks, and that is a very memorable one, the taper tantrum. Now, here's the dirty secret about the taper tantrum. The actual curtailment of bond purchases did not begin until January of 2014. However, bond yields moved up dramatically beginning in June of 2013. So the Fed was buying, yet yields were rising. What gives, what explains this episode? Well, really important to understand that when Mr. Bernanke first uttered the word taper in June of 2013, what really changed is that bond traders decided that if tapering was closer at hand, so too were interest rate hikes. And so what 
before the taper word was used, looked like a first rate hike wouldn't arrive for two years, let's say. Suddenly, the market reassessed the timing of interest rate hikes and the path of overnight rates, making them appear much sooner, maybe six months out. And this had a dramatic impact on the longer term part of the Treasury curve. So just to illustrate this, it's kind of like if Ben Bernanke were a CrossFit athlete in his spare time, he made a dramatic movement in the short term part of the Treasury curve, and that had a dramatic ripple effect to longer term interest rates. That was the key to the taper tantrum, not actual Fed bond buying or selling. So to sum up, first, the Fed's balance sheet will still be a big balance sheet well into next decade. Second, changes in the balance sheet will be gradual, and changes in the balance sheet don't tell us much anyway about what will happen to longer-term interest rates out over the next year. Third, the real driver of changes in interest rates, we think, will be changes in expectations for overnight rates. So if the Fed can get to the balance sheet unwind without seeing a dramatic change in expectations for overnight rates, we think the Fed can avoid taper tantrum 2.0. And in the end, the Fed's balance sheet concerns will be much ado about nothing. Thank you for watching. This is the Payton Economics team signing off.